Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video four, and today we're talking about the Wavetable engine. So before we dive into that, let's go over to the Analog engine and talk about the Sync feature real quick. So Oscillator 1 has this button called Sync, and if we put our mouse over it, on the bottom it says, when active, Oscillator 2 is hard synced to the frequency of Oscillator number 1. Meaning that once this is on, this course knob now will change the pitch of oscillator 2. So you might be thinking, okay, what's the point of changing the knob up here for the pitch? So this is where it becomes interesting. So we turn down the volume of oscillator 1 completely and then double click and then turn on number 1. So we hit a note and it's a saw wave as expected. And as we change this pitch up here, it changes the pitch of oscillator 2 that we're hearing. But very interesting is that since they're synced and they're going to different frequencies, we get some nice harmonic content if we change this course knob on oscillator 2. So check this out. So with no change, it's basically just a saw wave. And we can see it in the spectrogram view up here and the oscilloscope. But as soon as we introduce some pitch changes here, this pitch is going to not necessarily change the pitch of what we're hearing. It's adding harmonic content to this sound. But however, if we did want to change the pitch, we'd go for the first one. But the second one is adding some nice rich texture to it. And if we hop over to a sine wave for both of these shapes here, and we play a note, we have our sine wave. If we keep going up, once we hit seven, the perfect fifth, we can almost see how it's almost perfect. It's kind of a mirrored image of itself. And it doesn't really sound like it's doing too much. There's a little change, but not too much to it. And once we keep going, now here we've, arri we've arrived at the octave, back to our sine wave. So anywhere between those values, you can get some really interesting harmonic tones and content. So that's kind of what this option does. So now diving into the wavetable. So go to new preset here, and it's going to automatically bring you to the first engine of the wavetable. So I'm going to deselect this morph. We're going to go over that in just a minute. So now we're looking at a bird's eye view of this wavetable. We have 2D and 3D. So 3D is this bird view. 2D is what we're currently on, the position of this wavetable. On 3D, we can see that because it's highlighted in blue. So as we move this position knob where it says wavetable, we're now cycling through these different wave shapes. So it starts with a sine wave, then a triangle, a saw wave, and then a square wave. And in the 2D, we can see that same view as well. And we can hear it too. Now the interesting spot is since this wavetable only has four shapes because it's the basic waveforms, if we select morph, this is going to fade in between the two before it actually gets to the snapped position. So if that doesn't make sense, let's look at the 2D. So at the very bottom, we have our sine wave. And as we move this, you can say it morphs into that shape. So the interpolation of the two or the four waveforms between themselves. Now that's very handy when you have a table like this where there's not very many waveforms and you don't want it to have such a snapping sound to it. You kind of want, it, want them to gradually kind of morph into each other. So that's basically how that works. So now let's check out some different waveforms that or different wave tables that we have. So we click up here and on the left hand side we have certain different categories. So this first one is building waves, which is the basic waveforms. We have two sign sweeps, additive thin, all these different kind of wave tables. So let's just click another one like additive four. And this is what it looks like here. So as we move through this, we can kind of see what's happening here and we can listen to it as well. Now in pigments, you can have 256 different waves within a table. So if the table sense doesn't, doesn't make sense, kind of think of it like you have a file and there's up to 256 of different types of waveforms. And then you put that in here and you can move them and automate them in all sorts of ways to make interesting sounds. Like we can automate this knob here so it, so it would kind of do something like that the whole time. So if we had like an LFO, for example, and we're like, okay, we want this LFO to be on this position. So we click this plus and then we drag LFO up a little bit. So now it's moving between these positions. But more on modulation later. Let's dive more back into this, uh, this additive 
it's additive synth or not additive synth, additive init for. So in these basic wave tables, there's quite a lot of stuff to go through. And then we also have different categories. We have natural, so we have didgeridoo, dusty guitar, French horn. So the dusty guitar is interesting as well because we can see what is going on here. So let's delete this modulation real quick and let's kind of look at what's happening here. <laughs> And that's just a couple of them that come with the synth. Now we have Pigments 3 with a whole lot of different stuff as well here. Then we have Pigments 3.5 where they added more wavetables. We have some process stuff, which is kind of cool as well. So like, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Disagio, I don't have no idea. And not to mention, you can add unison to this as well. So that already sounds pretty cool, just going slowly through the position, some unison. That's not even filtering or effects or anything else layered underneath that. So definitely pretty cool. So we'll bring those voices back down to zero and look a little bit more here. So on this left-hand side, we have some uh, synthesizers category, which is very cool. One of my favorites because there's a lot of different kind of waveforms that we can play with here. So here's like the mini waveforms, for example. So if we double click this, we can go to the 2D view and see these types of specific shapes. Because you'll find a lot of different synths, they'll say they're a square wave or a saw wave, but they don't necessarily all sound exactly the same. They may have the same harmonic content, but some of the partials or harmonics might be a little bit different in phase or volume, resulting in a different type of sound. Which is very cool because you can build a whole patch based on these mini type of waveforms. And if we take off more, if we can kind of individually see what each, uh, each waveform is doing. We have a decent square wave here, it has a square wave sound, but if we look on the oscilloscope, it doesn't really look like that much of a square wave. I mean, it has the sound and the shape, but there's something different about it, which is very cool in that sense, because not all these waveforms are exactly the same. So going down through this list, we have a lot of other stuff to go through. So we can go for, let's see, let's try this one here. And back inside this menu here, if you want to import some of your waveforms as well, you can always go to this folder here on the top right to import a folder maybe you've downloaded or maybe you've made in a different synth or something like that. You can bring that folder into Pigments and have those wavetables accessible as well. This next icon here is going to be an import file with a little waveform here. So you can basically import just one wavetable if that's maybe all you have. So that's what these ones do up here. And then the X is going to close this window. And then if you don't want to keep going in this menu and keep going through, you kind of just want to cycle through them in a different category. So let's go Pigments 3, 13 Limit. Let's select this one here. Let's go to our 3D view. And we can just hit these arrows. So it's an easier way to cycle through all these different shapes here. So with all the, with these different engines within pigments, there's some similarities. So for example, we have the tune over here on the left-hand side, just like we had on the analog engine over here. So let's go to look at this one here. We have the tune and then the unison. So it's basically going to be the same same stuff. So we're not, ne not necessarily gonna cover them in this video. Uh, they are covered in the last video. And as well as the output, the filter mix and so on and so forth. It's gonna be the same thing, but wavetable one has the wavetable section instead of the noise. And also this modulator is gonna have a couple extra options than just what this has here. So this is basically gonna be it for this video. On the next ones, we're gonna talk about the frequency modulation and then so on and so forth, phase modulation, phase distortion, wave folding, what all those are, how they work, and all these different options that kind of can be a little overwhelming if we look at all these and what they do. So. Yeah, that is this in a nutshell. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, press like and we'll see you in the next one.